In this video, we're talking about how to say where a function is increasing and decreasing. This is part of optimization. And in this particular problem, we're working with the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. What we need to do is say where this function is increasing and where it's decreasing. So when we talk about increasing and decreasing, we're just talking about if we graphed this function, where would it be moving up? that would be increasing, and where would it be moving down, that would be decreasing. The way that we're going to do that is by finding critical points and then testing those critical points using the first derivative test. This video could also be called first derivative test instead of increasing and decreasing. So we're always going to follow the same process to do this, and the first thing we're going to do is take the derivative, and that'll be, of course, f prime of x. Then we'll just use power rule to take the derivative of this particular function. So the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. The derivative of negative 2x squared is going to be negative 4x because we bring this 2 down in front. Multiply it by the coefficient of negative 2. So negative 2 times 2 is a negative 4. And then we say 2 minus 1 for the new exponent. That's 1, so we get x to the first power here, or just x. Then the derivative of 1 is 0, so we don't have to add 0 here. So this is our derivative function. Now in order to find critical points, what we want to do is set this derivative function equal to 0. So we'll say 0 is equal to 4x cubed minus 4x. And now we want to solve for x. So to solve for x, we will factor out a 4x. So we'll say 4x times x squared minus 1. We can factor x squared minus 1 because it's the difference of squares. So we'll get 4x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now 0 theorem tells us that we can set each of these factors equal to 0 individually. So if we say 4x equals 0, then we'll get x equals 0. If we say x plus 1 equals 0, then we'll get x equals negative 1. And if we say x minus 1 equals 0, we'll get x equals positive 1. In other words, these are the three values of x that can make the right-hand side of this equation equal to 0 and therefore make the equation true. So these numbers then are the critical numbers of the function. They are potential critical points. Critical points are points where the function changes direction from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. We're interested in figuring out which of these are critical points. So these are potential critical points, but we have to prove that they're critical points in order to show that those are points where the function actually changes direction. So the way that we prove that these are critical points is by using the first derivative test. And in order to use the first derivative test, we'll draw a simple number line here and we're going to plot these potential critical points. So we're going to start with negative 1 because that's the leftmost point here. So we'll say negative 1, we'll say 0, and then positive 1. Notice that that breaks the number line into four intervals. We have one interval here, second interval, third interval, and fourth interval. We need to use the first derivative test to test each of these intervals to see how the function behaves, whether it's increasing or decreasing, on each one of these intervals. And to do that, we'll use the first derivative test. So we'll take a point in that interval. So for example, if we take this point here, negative 2, negative 2 lies in the interval negative infinity to negative 1. And we'll plug that value into the first derivative to see what the function's behavior is there. We're also going to test points in every other interval. So here we'll say negative 1 half. Here we'll say positive 1 half. And here we'll say positive 2. It doesn't matter which point you pick as long as you pick a point in the interval. So we'll start with this point here, negative 2, and we're plugging everything into f prime. That's why it's called the first derivative test, because you plug these test points into the first derivative. And to help remind yourself that you're plugging into the first derivative, you can go ahead and label this number line f prime to remind yourself you're plugging into f prime. So we're going to say f prime of negative 2, our first test point, is going to be equal to, and we're just plugging negative 2 into this expression right here. So we're going to say 4 times negative 2 quantity cubed minus 4 times negative 2. And what that's going to give us is negative 2 cubed is a negative 8. Negative 8 times 4 is a negative 32. We're going to say 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8. So we have minus a negative 8 or plus 8. Now when it comes to the first derivative test, the actual value here is not important. What's important is whether or not the value is positive or negative. Obviously negative 32 plus 8 is going to give us a negative value, so we'll just go ahead and say that this is going to be negative. We'll come back to this in a second. Let's go ahead and find the value for each of the other three test points. So we'll do negative 1 half, so f prime of negative 1 half 
is going to be equal to, and again we're plugging into this expression, so 4 times negative 1 half cubed minus 4 times negative 1 half is going to be equal to negative 1 half cubed is going to give us a negative 1 eighth. 4 times a negative 1 eighth is going to give us a negative 1 half, so we'll have negative 1 half. And then here, negative 4 times a negative 1 half is a positive 2, so we get plus 2, and we can see that this value here is going to be positive. We'll test positive 1 half, so f prime positive 1 half is going to be 4 times 1 half cubed minus 4 times 1 half is going to be equal to, this is 1 eighth times 4 is positive 1 half. Here we're going to have a negative 2, so we can see that this is going to be a negative value. And then our last test point, positive 2, so we'll say f prime of positive 2 is 4 times 2 cubed minus 4 times 2. And we're going to see 2 cubed is 8 times 4 is 32, so 32 minus 8, that's going to give us a positive value. So now what we want to do is plot these values on our number line. So you can see we got negative, positive, negative, positive. So we'll go ahead and say that this is negative, positive, negative, positive. And what this indicates to us is that if we get a negative value here using the first derivative test, that tells us that the original function, f of x, not f prime of x, but the original function, f of x, is decreasing. So we can go ahead and draw a decreasing arrow. If we get a positive value, it tells us that the original function is increasing. So we have increasing, here we have decreasing, and here we have increasing again. So what we can say then is that the function changes direction at x equals negative 1, it also changes direction at x equals 0, and it changes direction at x equals 1. So negative 1, 0, and 1 are in fact critical points because they represent points at which the function changes direction. At x equals negative 1, the function was decreasing to the left of that point, and then once it hits negative 1, it starts increasing. Once it hits x equals 0, it starts decreasing again, and once it hits x equals 1, it starts increasing again. That means that x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1 represent local minima of the function, and x equals 0 represents a local maximum. So if we want to summarize our findings about where the function is increasing and decreasing, we'll go ahead and say the function is increasing on the interval negative 1 to 0, so we'll say negative 1 to 0. It's also increasing on the interval 1 to infinity, so 1 to infinity. The function is decreasing on negative infinity to negative 1, so we'll say negative infinity to negative 1, and it's also decreasing on the interval 0 to positive 1, so 0 to positive 1. So that's how we would summarize our findings about where the function is increasing and where it's decreasing.